Twitter, YouTube. I just recently did a premiere where I got into, I guess, sort of a back and forth with a former student of mine named Colon Man, uh, comma, space, Michael, period. And the gist of it was this. He wrote a, a very cool, correct sentence structure, but he was using, he was using makeshift spellings. I, I would call them makeshift spellings. For example, he used the word experience, but instead of EXP, he used AEXP. Okay? Now, to me, that is makeshift spelling. That's like the same thing that Russell J. Gould does when he writes out family. Instead of putting L-Y, he puts L-I. Or he will spell the word only with L-I at the end. With no etymological basis for that spelling. No continuance of the evidence for it. No specific continuance of the evidence for it. So what I did was, from the get-go, I asked Michael, what is your etymological continuance of the evidence for the spelling of A-E in the word experience, specifically. What is the continuance of the evidence for that? Or are you just making stuff up? And so he went on to leave messages talking about how in Beowulf, the word, uh, the book Beowulf and that certain languages, they combined the, the two vowels into one. He called it an ash. I think. But actually, if you go through my videos, you will find multiple videos of me giving closure to the digraph. The digraph is what I use when you have an A and an E and you combine them together and they're connected as an equal or oite or things like that. You can use them. They're called digraphs. That's the correct terminology for it. Uh, from my dictionary, of course. I mean, other people may have other dictionaries and other meanings, and however they got those, I'm not quite sure. But I am 100% sure I can certify how I got mine and provide a continuance of the evidence for that. Any case, so I asked him, what is your specific continuance of the evidence for that spelling? Show me historical evidence in an etymology dictionary. Give me a link, please where experience was once spelled A-E-X. And he continued to go on telling me about other words, like, well, in this language, again, was spelled A-E or something like that. Don't quote me. I'm something like that. But he kept saying things like that, using other examples, but not the word experience. And I must have asked him four or five times, please share a specific etymological root evidence, earliest nativity root meaning of experience being spelled A-E. And he couldn't do it. You know why he couldn't do it? Because it doesn't exist. You don't, I mean, I don't know what, how many videos he has on his channel. I don't know how many people he's taught in the last six years. I don't know how many performances he's done with correct sentence structure in the past six years. What I'm very confident of is my position and my performances and everything. And the whole point of this, it's not, it's not to be a pissing contest. The whole point of this is to show, to be able to show when you walk into those venues that you have a continuance of the evidence for the grammar you're using, for your facts. If you don't, you better exercise extra caution. So, for example, the word equal. I did a salvage on AE. The word equal. If you look that up in an etymology dictionary, you will find that one form, historical form of the word equal, was indeed spelled A E Q. So, there is evidence of that in the past. I can point to it. And of course, I did a video on it many years ago. So I asked Michael right now, where's your video for your closure on the word experience being spelled with A-E any time in the historical past? 
I don't think you're going to find it. I'm not saying you won't. What I am saying is the reason why what I teach is so successful, and for those that want to learn, actually very simple, simple to learn, is because I use a continuance of the evidence. I'm just not making shit up. I'm not using obscure sources. I use an etymology dictionary that anyone can access. Because that's the whole point of rule one, rule equal. Everybody can use it. Everybody are welcome to understand. They're we- welcome to understand it, to cognize it, to look things up and get the same results that I do. No secrets, no tricks, no obscurity, no classification, no archaic, esoteric meanings, spellings, or anything like that. It's all flat out for anyone to see. And again, I don't. I really try to distill everything down to its simplest form. And so the lesson for me, because as a tutor, I'm also being taught in certain aspects. I feel like it would be foolish to think that one knows everything. But what what I learned from this live stream and, and going back and forth with Michael is that What is the function of this YouTube channel? It's for me to teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. For people that want to learn it, as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, I teach the easiest, most simplified way to use the, the technology. Now I ask, what is Michael's volition for being here? Because I did block him once before because of exactly what he did on this live stream. He's obviously not here to learn the grammar. Much like, uh, I think, another former student, uh, Brian-James, perhaps Michael's cup is full. Maybe he thinks he knows things that I don't. And I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. But with regards to this grammar, the possibility or probability of that is very, very, very slim just based upon the sheer number of hours that I've put into this and sacrificed for. I cultivate humility. I'm open to being wrong and correcting. However, the purpose and function of this channel is for me to teach those who want to learn. It's not for me to mitigate back and forth with someone who will not answer a simple question that I ask multiple times. What is your specific etymological closure on the spelling of experience with A-E at the beginning? Show me the proof. And he wouldn't do it because he probably couldn't do it. He was trying to throw all kinds of different stuff. Well, look, it's used here. Look, it's used there. Yeah, maybe, but it's not used with experience. (laughs) So... Long story short, this will not happen again. I apologize to you, the viewer, if you were watching and you saw the, the chat box flood with this type of uh, mitigation, it's not going to happen again. Because if Michael is not here to learn grammar, then why is he here? Is he here to try and push his own belief system, his own style? Because if that's the case, Michael... Use your own YouTube channel. It looks like, you know, from your past two uh, participations here with my live streams, that you have at least two different YouTube channels. Use one of those and create your own videos and teach your own style of whatever it is you're using. I'm not quite sure it's correct sentence structure. Um, But hey, you know, do your thing. Don't do it here. Because it doesn't work here. If you're here to learn grammar, welcome. If you're here to push your own agenda, it's not going to happen. I'll just block you again. It's uh, my ship, my rules, my terms and conditions. It's up to you whether you honor those terms and conditions or not. If you don't, if you decide to violate them, if you're not here to learn the grammar... If you're only here to try and argue with me, as you have in the past, 
then you're jettisoned. It's that simple. And the reason why I'm sharing this without going into too much detail is that I want other people to hear this as well. To know the code of conduct here, how you must conduct yourself if you want to remain aboard this vessel. I'm not trying to inhibit or just or uh, judge anyone's particular stances or positions. I'm simply saying that this channel is for those who want to learn grammar. I'm the tutor. I'm the master commander of this vessel. My way or the highway. It's that simple. Terms and conditions are very clear. You just click that little box before you make a comment that says, I think it says channel guidelines or comment guidelines. Click that. It tells you all you need to know. And if you're just going to start blah, blah, blah and about something that doesn't make any sense in the context of what I'm talking about, if I ask you a question half a dozen times and you never directly answer it, well, then why are you here? What, what are you doing? So hope this wasn't too long-winded. If you notice in the last premiere I just did, I did give a thank you to colon man, comma, space, Michael, period, for the great questions he asked during that particular live stream, which he clarified later on and said he wasn't asking them for him, that he already knew that. He was asking for someone else. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.